All right, since the eyes and the skin are taken care of, let's go ahead and close up this group and get right onto the eyeshadow. So we'll create, <laughs> create, create a new layer and we're gonna call it eyeshadow. And all we're gonna do is go to our brush tool and we're gonna size it up with the right bracket. And we'll make it pretty big. And if you don't know what the right bracket is for whatever reason, you can always just go up here and type in the size of your brush and all that good stuff. And all you're gonna do is paint in black around his eye and a little bit of his cheek, paint in around the other eye and a little down his cheek. And yes, I know this looks retarded and not very convincing, but we'll we'll make this look nice. So go ahead and change the blend mode to overlay. That should be your favorite by now. And that looks a little bit ridiculous, so we're going to go back to the effects and give it a color overlay. And once again, we're going to make it black. And we're going to change that blend mode to overlay as well. And hit OK. And close that up. And then change the opacity to about maybe 36% and that should look like it's a little bit more shadowy than the rest of his face but we don't want that much shadow we want to get rid of it so that it's only under his eyes and maybe a little bit above it so we're going to give it a layer mask you should be used to this by now I'm going to zoom in and size down the brush with the left bracket key we're going to paint in black remember you got black down here in the left hand corner and we're going to just clean up over here and clean up over there and make sure you don't have any uh, black stuff in his hair whoa what was that that was an accident Let's swap that around okay I don't know what happened there but it was kind of weird so we're gonna go back up here paint in some black to get rid of that shadow and that's looking pretty decent right there so if you turn this layer on and off or before and after maybe we'll get rid of a little bit more right here do before and after we've got some in his hair right there before and after and that's looking pretty good oh I actually forgot we don't want this black to be covering his eyes if you if you're paying attention to the before and after you're actually making his eyes a little bit darker and we don't want to do that so we'll size down our brush with the left bracket and zoom in a lot and we're gonna kind of start getting rid of that in the eye oops I accidentally overlapped the eyelid a little bit so I'm gonna swap that to white and go back over it to bring back the shadows and that's looking pretty good right there so we'll go ahead and go over to this eye do the same thing swap over to black and we'll paint in right here and that's looking pretty decent right there alright so one option that you can take is to have this thumbnail selected and go to a filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll just give it maybe a 10 pixel blur. Because if you look at this preview and unclick it and, re and just do a little before and after, you can see that with this blur on, it kind of blends with the eyelids a little bit better. You see that? So, that's just something that I like to do when it comes to adding the, the shadows around his eyes. And we'll hit OK. And go to our move tool just because it looks more like an arrow. OK, so we're going to go ahead and zoom out to the canvas size by hitting Control Zero. Just to get a good look at how things are coming along. The only thing we have left is to add in some things under his lips right there. So we'll go ahead and make a new layer. Call it Fang. And we'll swap to our pen tool, which is right here, or you can hit the letter P, your call, and we'll zoom in. And we're going to make one anchor point right around here, right above his lip. 
and we're going to click and drag to make it curve and depending on how much you want the tooth to curve is how much you're going to you're going to drag it and then once you think you got a nice curve go ahead and click across from your first point and drag it a little upwards and then click back here and as you can see we've got a little bit of an outline of a tooth going here so we're gonna right click and make a selection and we don't want the feather radius to be anything besides zero so just type in zero there anti-aliased is good and new selection and hit OK and then we're going to fill this up with white with shift backspace and we're going to use white hit OK and then we'll deselect with control D or command D if you're on a Mac and that's pretty good and we need another one of these so we're just going to duplicate it with control J or command J if you're on a Mac and we're going to hit V and we're going to move it over and we're going to hit control T or command T to bring up the transform tool and you see where it says width 100 percent we're just going to click in front of the 100 percent and put the minus sign so that it flips it around and then if you want you can go ahead and turn the thing a little bit and position it a little bit differently and check mark it and this thing right here we're going to go ahead and turn as well and we'll use the arrow keys to move it a little bit so obviously teeth don't overlap your lips so we're gonna give that a mask but we're gonna group these two layers first by hitting control G calling them fangs and then with this group selected we're gonna add a layer mask and go back to our brush tool with the letter B sorry almost uh, forgot to mention that and zoom in and position and we'll just paint over this right here and paint over this right here and paint in a little bit more and that should automatically fade it fade the tooth out so it looks like there's a little bit of shadow on it so that should actually do it right there hit control zero zoom back out And with that, you guys are done. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to leave some comments with uh, new ideas or questions in the uh, comment section below this video. And if you have any really huge, serious questions, go ahead and email me at brandon at checkit.com. And if you don't understand masking that well, be sure to check out our masking tutorial. And that should be able to give you a very good idea of how masking works and a good way to use it. Alright, with all that said, have a good day. See you next time.